to Tech Check. We continue moving along with another special session and we thought let's change it up again. As you've seen lately, we're changing topic and sometimes people, but the focus is still on Pakistanis and Pakistani Americans. And today I'm very pleased to have with you a great customer of mine, now becoming a good friend, Mr. Jawad Hassan, the CFO of Axon. And he's going to tell you a little bit more about himself and what Axon is all about. With that, Jawad, welcome to the show. Thanks for being with us today. Farooq, good to see you again. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. So Jawad, let's dive right in. Tell us a little more about you, your story. Yeah, uh, my parents came here from Pakistan in the 70s. I was born in the Boston area, uh, born and raised, uh, born in Quincy, Mass, actually, and, and grew up there, went to college in Worcester, Mass. Uh, so very sort of you know, geographically in one location. And then after college, I, when I graduated, I started working for GE and I spent 13 years, the first 13 years of my career at GE and GE is a, a different company now, but back then, I mean, when I started, Jack Welch was still technically the, the CEO for a few months. Right. And it was very much the type of company where the more you put into it, the more you got out of it and the more you raise your hand for different responsibilities and assignments, they were happy to give them to you. So I ended up, uh, I lived in seven different countries. I traveled to probably 36, uh, 12, lived in 12 different states. I just would keep moving every six months or so for like 13 years. And I uh, just got a lot of great experience across different industries, different business cycles, financial services, industrial, and saw a lot you know, in my time there and progressed in finance leadership programs, leadership development programs. And I left GE in 2014 to become the CFO of a private equity backed company. I was there for three years. We right. took them through an exit. We exited, sold to Vista Equity. And then in 2017, I had an opportunity to come to Axon and be the CFO. And I've been here since. Awesome, awesome. Well, tell the audience a little more about Axon. Very interesting company. Yeah, you know, I, I love this company. When I first heard about the opportunity, the company was still called Taser. Uh, that's the flagship product. We um, made a lot of people don't know this. Taser is sort of like Kleenex, where it's like a you know household name, but it's actually a product. It's it's a it's a uh, trademark brand. Uh, the Taser was uh, first developed in the late '80s, early '90s. The company started in 1993, and then from the Taser, all that success, we then pivoted into body cameras, uh, and to really try to drive more transparency within law enforcement. And then from there. To us become market leader in body cameras was really the software. And so we built the cloud architecture and all the software that officers came to love uh, to interact with. We then parlayed that into other enterprise software for law enforcement, such as records and dispatch. And so today, and along that journey, we ended up transforming the, the company and the name of the company as well, because it didn't just make sense for us to be just Taser. Taser is a, a product. It's a product we love, but it's a single brand. And Axon is really much larger than that. So today we serve, um, you know, we serve law enforcement and, and our mission is to protect life quite simply and to make the bullet obsolete. And that's the thing I think I love the most about Axon is we not only have a lot of smart, talented people working on all these, you know, hard problems, but we're right at the intersection of technology and social justice. And so the work that we're doing is really having an impact. You feel that day to day. That's fantastic. And I've had the pleasure of learning a lot more about what Axon does and stands for. And it's amazing to watch, A, how impactful your products and your services are, and watching you go through that transformation from being purely a physical security provider to an enterprise software player. So that's, it's been a real cool story for me. And it's even helped me a ton here at Salesforce internally. So yeah, Salesforce has been a real, uh, a real great partner to us during that transformation. Well, that's awesome. Well, back to it. And Jawad, you know, when you and I first met, it was a great story. And I remember you were telling me you were working on a book that kind of talked about how you grew from where you grew from into a CFO role at a publicly traded company. That's very inspiring. There's not a ton of Pakistani Americans sitting in those spaces right now. Love to hear more about the book and what what's the impetus for that? Yeah, I guess, so it started really with me defining my North Star for myself, you know, probably about eight or nine years into my career, I took a job working for a, a former manager of mine, a mentor of mine. And about a month after I got there, he left and went somewhere else. 
and I did some soul searching because I realized, do I really want to keep going uh, and taking jobs that other people suggest I take? Like my mental model was keep your head down, work hard, and people will notice you. You'll get tapped on the shoulder, whether it's within your company or maybe your recruiter. And what I realized was if I do that, I'm going to end up where other people want me. And it may not necessarily be where I want to be. So I, I really stepped back and thought about where is it that I want to be? Let me define that North Star. At the time, it was to run a business. And the closest proxy for that was to be a CEO. And so I, I then worked backwards from there and said, how do I become a CEO? I figured the best way for me to do that, the fastest way for me to do that would be to first rise to the top of my function in finance. Right. And so then I, you know, working backwards from there, looked at uh, standalone CFO roles. Uh, at the time I was a, you know, uh, I was a, an FP&A manager, right? And I, and I, from there, then took a divisional CFO role. At GE. I wish I could tell you, Farouk, that I, it, worked out exactly as I had planned. I went from a divisional CFO to a private equity CFO to a public CFO, but a lot of that's luck too, right? Like my, uh, one of my first jobs at GE, Jeff Bornstein, who ended up becoming the CFO for all of GE, he was a CFO for GE Plastics, the division I started my career in. And right. he met with some of us that just had graduated and said for him in his career, 80% of what happened to him was luck and 20% was his own hard work. And what he said, which always stuck with me was that 20% has to be just dialed in and flawless, right? You have to be ready for when, uh, when opportunity strikes. And so I really took that to heart and made sure that I did work on myself so that when, you know, opportunities do arise and, and uh, everyone needs to catch a break that I'd be ready for it. And, and so anyways, that's really, that was the, the impetus behind my journey in leadership and over the years, I've collected notes and I've PowerPoint presentations and shared different thoughts on leadership. And as my job got bigger and bigger and the audiences, you know, got a little bit broader and uh, I, I started to have a bigger pulpit, so to speak, a lot of people would come to me and say, hey, what you said really resonates with me. You should think about writing a book. And, and awesome. so that's how we ended up here. Awesome. Wow, that's a great story. And what's the title of the book? So our audience knows and they can go look it up. So the book is called What They Didn't Tell Me. And the reason I chose that title, every chapter in the book uh, has a bit of feedback that I got. It, it's basically a quote of something someone said to me. In many cases, it was some feedback I got that was very hard to hear uh, at the time. But in hindsight, you know, I got with more experience and context, I got some, uh, I got an ability to really put that in, into context and understand how valuable that feedback was. And specifically, it was what they didn't say where I learned a lesson. And that, that's where you get the title of the book. That's awesome. Wow, that's great. Well, Jawad, you know, it's been a real pleasure having you here. As you know, we're coming up to the end of our time. Uh, your story is awesome. Uh, and I look forward to reading the book myself. And best of luck with this. And uh, we wish you the best. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, for Good to see you as always. And your, to our audience. We really appreciate your support. Continue to like, share, and subscribe. As you all know now, we've crossed 45 sessions and we're not stopping anytime soon. We need to keep reflecting well on what we Pakistanis are doing, not only in Pakistan itself, but also here in the US and across North America. So in any case, to my audience, I bid you well. Allah Hafiz. Thank you, Jawad.